Hey, it's Mr. C here, and we're going to do another story called Thinking About Ants. Thinking About Ants. Now here's an idea. For a little while, think about ants. Begin by looking. Get up close to an ant. Study it. Try to put yourself in the ant's place. Think, what would it be to be an ant? First of all, think small, because the largest ant in the world is only about the size of a person's thumb. And some ants are small enough to hide inside an apple seed. So think tiny. Now, think a color. Black, blue, brown, red, yellowish, or greenish. An ant could be any of these colors. What color ant would you want to be? Next, think about the body of an ant. Imagine it's outside, light and tough and hard like a shell, not soft like skin. Notice the ant's shape. A body with three parts, six legs, instead of two. How would it be to have an ant face? Two huge eyes, a mouth, a pair of scissor jaws to bite and tear with. No ears, no nose, instead two hairy feelers on your head to wave around like magic wands. They'd catch the smell of something in the air, like food. What do ants eat? Some eat meat, a snack of dead bug, a hunk of worm, a bite of lizard, or an ant will munch on a piece of hot dog left from someone's picnic lunch. Some ants eat seeds, some eat fruit, others sip honeydew from tiny aphids. There are even ants that eat each other. Some ants bite, some ants sting, others squirt smelly acid when they're scared. If you were an ant, what would you be afraid of? A stomping foot, a hungry flicker, a spiny anteater, heavy rain, bug spray, toads. But the scariest thing in an ant's life might be another ant that's an enemy. Where do ants live? In the dark, inside a dead tree, under a rock under the ground with a mound of dirt or sand to mark the spot. An ant can live in a house between the cracks in the floor or behind the kitchen cupboard door. Even the green stem of a plant can be home to an ant. Think about living in dark places but imagine lots of company, sisters, brothers, a family, living and working together because an ant can't live alone. In the ant nest, everyone has a job. What would you do if you were an ant? Would you hunt for food for everyone to share? Would you help to build the nest? Could you carry something twice as big as you? Would you lick the ant eggs and feed the little larvae that hatch out? Would you help an ant come out from a cocoon? The ants do these things. They're called worker ants. Here's some labeling. Bringing food to the nest. Soldier ant guarding the entrance. Moving dirt from the nest to build a new tunnel. Insects and seeds. 
ants feeding one another. Pupae, larvae being fed and cared for. Queen laying the eggs. Workers tending the eggs. Workers building a new part of the nest. Hatching larvae. And workers tending half-grown larvae. There are soldier ants, too. They guard the nest. They stand at the entrance, alert, swinging their feelers, picking up all strange shapes and smells. And if an invading army comes, they're fierce. They tear their enemies to pieces with their sharp jaws. A soldier ant can bite a strange bug's head off. Now think about the biggest ant in the nest. She's the mother of all the other ants. She's the only one who can lay eggs. All the other ants take care of her because she is the queen. A queen ant may lay a hundred thousand eggs in her life. One day she may lay an egg that will hatch into another queen. Like all queens, that ant will have wings. Some damp afternoon she'll fly away with a group of male ants. They'll mate with her, and soon after that they'll die. Then the queen will fly off alone to make a nest of her own. She'll lose her wings and begin her work. Nest maker, egg layer, ant mother, and some day she will lay an egg that hatches out a queen, and then the whole cycle will begin again. That's how it would be to be an ant.